Thank you. Well, when I left San Diego um, two days ago, it was 80 degrees. It was quite a shock getting off the, uh, getting off the flight the other morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to talk to you about not just something that's coming, but something that's actually here. Um, my daughter, two years ago, when I explained to her what we were doing, she said, oh my god, Dad, you're Skynet. Um, it's not quite that dangerous, but it is important for us to, uh, to really begin to adapt to uh, the new age. The reality is that since the beginning of time, we've struggled to understand how people really feel. If you take that to the current time, there's billions, hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars spent every year um, acquiring customers, trying to understand you know, what those customers are um, thinking about the products that we're, we're delivering to them, trying to understand how they feel about the customer experience. And um, the, the reality is we've been guessing. We've just been guessing. John Wanamaker famously said, I know that 50% of my advertising dollars are wasted. I just don't know which 50%. Well, we know. We know now what 50% are wasted. Um, if you, you think about the, the opportunity to improve product development, I mean, we all know that most products, most new products fail. And the reason they fail, of course, is because it's so hard to get people to give us honest feedback. And surveys, well, most of you know, even though many of you fund surveys, we know that people lie. Now, they don't lie on purpose. It's just very difficult for us all, because of our isms, to say what we really mean, or even, for, even remember what we felt at the moment that we felt it. So at Emotion, we build detectors. These are software detectors, by the way. And these detectors allow us to measure emotion from which we can infer. Or they allow us to measure expressions from which we can infer emotion. They allow us to predict demographics, such as gender, relative age range, and ethnicity as well as measure the relative position of the face to the camera, which tells us generally where people are looking. It allows us to measure the 28 of the 46 action units, which are the alphabet of facial expression, which allows us to build other detectors, which I'll talk about later as regards a, uh, um, a particular use case. So with that, let me dive in. Emotions drive spending. That's one of the reasons to focus here. Following that path to intent to a purchase is what the game is for most of us. So if emotions drive spending, why don't we measure, measure it everywhere and all the time? Well, the reason is because before now, the enablers weren't in place. The um, camera technology wasn't strong enough for us to actually measure the micro expressions that are on people's faces. Those subconscious reactions that show up on our muscles and our face before we can shut it down with our consciousness because they're impulse. Um, the processing power to handle the deep neural network that, that, are, that we now can deliver. I can run our SDK on less than one core of my MacBook Air. It would have taken a Cray computer back in the 90s to handle these algorithms. So with the combination of things that we can do today, the enabling technology combined with really, really smart people that are on my team, um, we've been able to do powerful things. I love going all natural. It just makes me feel better. Nothing between me and my 100% all natural, juicy, grass-fed beef. Introducing the All Natural Burger, the first ever in fast food, with no antibiotics, no added hormones, and no steroids. Only at Carl's Jr. Now, what did you see there? I'm sure there's tons of reactions across this room, but what I saw was a respondent who answered an online survey and said, yes, I'll, I'll answer a survey, and then was asked if they would view some content and if we could turn on their camera. And once again, they opted in. They said, yes, that's on the right. On the left was an advertisement that Carl's Jr., you know, where they wanted to understand how their ad was doing or would do. And there's a very simple visualization on the bottom. The point being here is that we were measuring his emotions on every frame. All of the things that I talked about, on every single frame, we were measuring those. And we aggregated these kinds of results over 300 people split equally between men and women. And we did this in about four days by sending out these surveys 
uh, getting the response, sending the frames to the cloud, doing the processing. What's historically taken $50,000, $60,000, seven to eight weeks to do, we could do in four or five days and basically $6,000. Disruptively affordable, disruptively fast, and disruptively accurate way to get market research information. Uh, Never been heard of before. Now, while sort of the results may be somewhat obvious in terms of how it would have broken out between the genders, the reality is the understanding on a second by second basis how the message was being delivered is incredibly valuable. This happens to be a, a brand that's focused on men between 18 and 35. So they hit their target market. It's good to know also how others feel about the product or, or the advertisement. But the point is, is that in the first 20 seconds, ads are made or broken. And we found some very um, uh, proprietary information in the course of building our algorithms. And we can tell people compared to, uh, by comparing to normative good ads, known good ads, known mediocre ads, and known bad ads, we can give them a prediction prior to paying for time whether that ad is gonna be successful or not. We do this through mastering three very hard sciences, deep learning, computer vision, and cognitive neuroscience. Our business was founded with six co-founders out of the University of California, San Diego, the most cited, most published pe people in the world who are very, 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 very capable. And as our previous speakers talked about, this is, you know, this is hard science. It's very, very hard science to get to this point where you can be predictive. We work at a pixel level, I should mention, by the way, not geographic landmarks. That pixel level will come into play in a, in a little bit when somebody asks the inevitable question around privacy. Um, in terms of retail use cases, merchandising and displays are obvious. The, cap, the head in, the cap in, uh, measuring how people react to changes in merchandise, how they react to changes in pricing, how they react to uh, various portions of the store compared to others. In general, A-B testing all the way through. In the main, understanding how people's customer experience is um, what the journey is on a minute by minute basis, on uh, day of week, day of month, as you make changes, is very, very powerful. And, and we've taken this into real use cases, for instance, with one of the major um, fast food restaurants, uh, quick food restaurants in the United States, uh, that was managing a really tough customer experience issue and wanting to know where to begin. Uh, we set up cameras at the, uh, at the uh, uh, pay line, what they call the cash line, so uh, at the pickup line, at the drive-in line, um, drive-up line, and as, and as well on the staff, on the crew. Uh, the findings were very, very powerful. One of the things that to be observed was that people are generally in a much better mood at the beginning of the day, and it trends negatively throughout the day. One of the really powerful findings was that the staff the anxiety and the stress on the staff as you move towards the busy lunch hour was phenomenal. The change was huge, and the attendant impact on customers was powerful as well. This leads you to questions, them to questions about staffing and other techniques that they were using in managing their stores. But fundamentally, uh, you, you, they began to hotspot all the areas where their experience was breaking down. One of the large consumer packaged goods companies uh, have, uh, you know, is probably our best testament to the fact that surveys just don't work. Um, in this particular case, they were taking a new, or wanted to take a new, uh, uh, three new fragrances of detergent, uh, laundry detergent, to market. And they were trying to decide between a, a series of six or seven different fragrances. So they did the obligatory focus groups. They brought in hundreds of people over many, many months and, 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 and ran these focus groups. And they videoed the, the, the focus groups. They had the obligatory psychographic survey at the end, um, and they, and, and, but they also had a behavioral component. So at the very, very end of the evening, they would say, all right, you can take one, but only one of these boxes home with you tonight uh, on us. What they found was the surveys were completely not predictive of which ones the consumers would choose to take home. Our technology was absolutely predictive and nailed it. And we nailed it on the negative channels, basically, disgust and dislike. And these are micro expressions that, that, you know, that, that fire, mainly around the nose, somewhat around the mouth and the top of the nose. Uh, they're part of the specific action units that we track. These micro expressions, by, by simply going to the expression, to the, uh, the fragrances that exhibited the least amount of these negative um, detectors, 
that was the one that people selected. So um, again, it's very, very difficult to get people to tell us what they really feel. And it's not that people are mischievous, it's just that they have difficulty telling you what they really feel. And that's what you want to know. That's what your business depends on. You, sp you spend a lot of money headed down the wrong, in the wrong direction, headed down a cul-de-sac if you can't get that real data. This is a, a quick example of how we actually do what I just said in real time across hundreds of faces. The other example, Emotion Media Panel, is a vertical snapshot of, of aggregating, anonymous aggregate, uh, excuse me, aggregate analysis of hundreds of people. We, we aggregate that and we do the outputs. In this case, we can also, with a single camera, measure all the faces in the field of view. So in this particular case, we had a 200 to 300 foot shot across the Golden State Warriors arena where we were picking up about 100 faces here. And we can do this in real time if we have enough instances of uh, processing power fired up. But, but what we're measuring here is not only, we're finding all the faces, we're measuring expression, we're measuring demographics, we're measuring pose range. The power of this, once again, is the ability, for instance, with a 4K camera to get to four or 500 people at a time. Think about this as next generation focus groups. And think about all the digital signage that now exists in many of the places where we are. One of the things the Warriors were astounded to find out was that 40% of the audience were women. They had no idea. The other thing they found was that in halftime, for instance, the percentage of women in the audience rose dramatically because the men tended to go get the beers and the food. Um, but, but the Warriors were running the same old ads in the, in, at a time frame when they had you know, 60, 70 percent of the audience was female. They could have been marketing to a whole different group of advertisers if they'd had this information. But they could also uh, measure attention and engagement, which is a better way to get a you know, better price for their advertisement. Very quickly, I'll just point out that because we can measure pose range, the red boxes imply or, in, or, or are indicative of people that are looking at the digital scoreboard, which is in the split screen on the far left. And so when people are not, those are the blue boxes. On the left-hand corner there, there's the vectors. Red vectors indicate that people are engaged with the content. Blue, not so much. White is the average. Once again, measuring uh, um, engagement and attention is a way to determine what you're getting for your dollar. So we've gone on a journey. We're about 95% plus accuracy as measured against human experts. And we continue to make great progress. That last 10% is always the hardest. And that last 10% um, is a function of a uh, deep neural net architecture that we overlaid about a year and nine months ago. Um, and, and we can, I, I'm just, you know, I would mention that this is against um, publicly available data sets um, where uh, known experts have sort of determined that those expressions are real. We built our own data set because we were pe pegging those data sets at 100%. So it just wasn't uh, really effective for us to compare against those. So we went to more real-time data sets with darker skinned people, lighter skinned people, dark lighting, um, you know, backlighting, tougher circumstances. And that's what we're measuring here because if I showed you these re results against the public data sets, it would say 100% and you probably wouldn't believe me. So um, making better decisions about everything is all about predictive analytics. Most companies now have their own data scientists. When you take our data and we give people, always give our customers the raw data, and you can correlate that to other, other metadata that you already have in your business on a that's on a timestamp basis typically, there are powerful, powerful insights here. This is a new age, and it's all about predictive analytics. It's all about big data, but you have to collect the data in order to benefit from it. And with cameras being everywhere and, and cameras on all the time, there's a huge opportunity. I'll close by saying, We've just patented in August uh, a new patent called Anonymization of Facial Expressions. I mentioned earlier that we work at the pixel level. We look at every pixel in the face box. What we do is basically explode those pixels once we process. So we never send the image to the, to the server. We don't need it. And we don't, have a, um, we don't have a hash. There is no key. That image can never be put back together again. Um, and it, so for us, we have everything that we need in the metadata to, you know, to process and measure emotions and demographics. So in advance, I just wanted to address the privacy issue, which should never be underwhelmed. It's an important issue, and that's why we went after 
um, making sure that even, even, even in an opt-in situation, someone might get access to that image later, we wanted to actually make sure the image could never be put back together. We work on an anonymized, aggregate basis. Thanks very much. But Ken, even if you have a privacy policy, what if I as a customer feel a bit spooked by the fact that there is a camera tracking how I'm feeling and I don't seem to be able to do anything about that? Yeah. Well, that is a real issue because the reality is that everywhere you are today, you're on camera, especially in London. But, but generally, um, you know, we are on camera most of the time. I think the, the, first of all, in any kind of situation where privacy is, uh, is expected on your device, um, on, at your lap, laptop, those al always have to be opt-in situations. The only time it wouldn't be an opt-in situation was if you're in a public setting where generally you're on camera anyway. So our goal was to say, okay, given that people are on camera in public situations, let's make sure that not only us, but no one else can, can get an image and try to tie it. I'm not sure how they would do this, but try to tie it to any data. So, Where does this go? Where is Emotion in five years from now? What will you be able to do that you can't yet do? Yeah, I, I think in five years' time, we will be the, uh, the power behind a many great solutions, not only in the retail space, uh, where predictive analysis is very valuable and saves a lot of money. But if you think about healthcare, we have the ability to assess depression, bipolar, PTSD, the, even concussions, these kinds of things. That's real value today because those things are hard to assess. 50% of depression is undetected. So if you had a very simple protocol, for instance, uh, two-minute protocol at the, at the beginning of an engagement with a healthcare provider where the doctor could get or healthcare official could get a green light or a flash of yellow, that could be very helpful. Education, we, we have a, a published results that indicate that um, measurements of engagement, uh, cognitive engagement and, and emotional engagement are better predictors of success, educational success, than a pretest, as an example. So giving teachers the ability to know earlier rather than later that their instruction, their presentation is landing or not. Finally, if you go into autos, I would predict that in five years from now, most cars will have cameras facing in on an opt-in basis and facing out. And I, I'm looking forward to the day when, uh, uh, maybe not me, but maybe, uh, who knows, my car will say to me, hey, Ken, have you been taking your medicine lately? <laughs> so mostly your work at the moment is visual signal processing. Yeah. Um, we're in a world where there are going to be trillions of sensors picking up all sorts of other signals, you know, how warm our yeah. seat is, how much we've been yeah. breathing. Yeah. Do you want to be collecting data from all these external yeah. other sources? Well, you, you really hit the nail on the head there. That's a really important thought. And it goes back to my point about um, being able to uh, correlate multiple uh, bits of data in, in, and to deliver even more powerful insights. So I, I do think we, we want that, and, I, and it's the reason that we've made an SDK available. It's the reason that we live in the API economy. We think it's very important that various players can um, tie together solutions in a way to deliver more value rather than less value. So I'm ver we're very much an open standard platform in that regard, and we hope that other uh, sensor collectors will do the same. And you will automatically sort our desktop photos into the happy ones and the sad ones. Ah, we've already done that. Yeah, it's, yeah we, 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 really, we really have, um, we, we really actually have an application that, that sorts uh, images by facial expression. That's pretty cool. Thank you for traveling to tell us the emotion story. Ken Denman. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.